Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Faith, and today I have a brand new co-star that we have added to our family. I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Miles James LaFave. He's the newest member of our family and we are head over heels in love. I had the baby on April 8th and we're doing really well. I say hi, you're actually awake. Are you ready for the camera? Cause you're gonna be my new co-star for a lot of intros these days. Cause we're still working on the nap time. The nap time is gonna be scheduled for actually painting. And then when he's awake, I'll probably end up having to do a lot of intros with him. So you'll see a lot more of this beautiful face. But for today's video, I kind of just wanted to talk to you about our birth story. So if you're not into how this all went down, you can definitely click away. There will be more painting tutorials to come when, um, hopefully soon, I'm not sure. We're still gonna have our flashback Fridays for a while um, and other stuff. And once I get around to, you know, getting some time to actually paint, I will be doing tutorials, I promise. But today we're just gonna talk about how our birth story went. It was pretty crazy, very different than my first, and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So let's jump right into the video. Okay, so let's just start with saying that pregnancy was not a walk in the park this time. My first pregnancy with Noah was actually really nice, the kind of way that you'd hope it would be. Not too many symptoms. I was nauseous at the beginning, but you know, I was pretty good throughout the whole thing. But with this guy, I had the nausea, the you know, pelvic pain, all the pains that you could have. It was just it was it was brutal. And then this guy just did not stop moving. He was like a little ninja in the womb, weren't you? Yeah, you drove me a little bit crazy. So the pregnancy was a little bit tougher this time, but I had this feeling that he was coming early. He just moved around so much, I figured there's no way he's gonna stay in till his due date, which is actually today, the 14th that I'm filming. Um, and he arrived on the 8th. So around the 6th, I thought my water broke. Um, or maybe it was earlier. Went to the hospital, they said no. I just peed myself, which apparently is very common <laughs> when you're pregnant. So it didn't break. Um, and then I had some doctor's appointments, went to my OB. I think it was the OB on the 6th and she checked and I was three centimeters dilated, which apparently you guys can stay at for like a week. Um, but so I did feel like he was coming early. I thought he was gonna come on the 6th. He did not come on the 6th. Um, I started to have some cramping on the 6th after she checked me, but two days went by and there was nothing. So I did all the little tricks in the book because I was just done with pregnancy. I wanted him to be out. I wanted him to be here. So I ate dates. I ate spicy Indian food. <laughs> I went for lots of walks, anything to get him out. And then the morning of the 8th, 4 o'clock in the morning, I started feeling some cramping and I was like, mm, this might be it. And then I'm pretty sure my water broke, even though the doctors still say it might not have been, they don't know when it happened. But anyway, thought we might as well just go to the hospital. 4 a.m., drive to the hospital, get there around five-ish, just because I wanted to make sure that the contractions that were happening were actually contractions. Get there, they check me, still only three centimeters dilated. So I was kind of like, oh. They said, you can stay or you can go home, um, but it might take a while, it's totally up to you. So Matt and I were kind of just at the hospital thinking, do we stay, do we go? I mean, I'm super uncomfortable here. It was like one of those like labored like triage rooms where the beds are like cardboard and I'm like, oh, I'm so uncomfortable. Maybe we go home, got dressed. And I was like, you know what? Let's just stay just in case. Thank God we did. Let me say it progressed so fast I call him his labor and birth the fast and the furious because within four hours he was out and oh yeah you you were out so I started to get more contractions closer more intense and I was just in a lot of pain and I'm always one that has opted for epidural with Noah my birth plan literally said give me an epidural 
get him out safe. That was my birth plan. And it was the same for him. Give me an epidural, <laughs> get him out safe. And my birth with Noah was actually really good because of it. You know, I had the epidural, didn't feel the contractions anymore. I was able to sleep. I rested even when I was like 10 centimeters with Noah. I was like, can we wait like an hour? And then I pushed him out. No problem. It was great. This time, this time, I wanted the epidural. I said, can I have it now? The anesthesiologist was busy in a C-section. They said, oh, they'll come right after they're done. Apparently this guy could not wait and labor progressed even faster. Um, and within the last hour from 7.30 to around 8.30, they start wheeling me down to the laboring room and I keep saying, I need this epidural, I want it now, please give it to me, I can't do this, I don't want to do this. The people who opt for no epidural, like you guys are a little bit crazy, but also admirable because this is not easy. Anyway, so they said, yep, he'll come as soon as we get there, we'll prep you for it. I'm still in the wheelchair, <laughs> like on the way to the laboring room, in the laboring room, and I just start saying, I'm, I'm, I gotta push. And they're just like, no, you can't push yet. And I'm like, something's happening. So I get on the bed, they check me, I'm eight centimeters. So it felt like on our way to the laboring room, till I got there, I went from like three, maybe four centimeters to eight centimeters. And I get on the bed and I'm like, guys, I'm pushing. And they're like, don't push. You're not there yet. They check again, nine centimeters. And I'm like, I, he's coming. <laughs> and I'm screaming. I'm like, I want the epidural. They're like, it's too late. <laughs> because the guy was not ready yet and there was no one to do it and this kid was coming out. So let's just say I'm a little bit traumatized. I'm not going to lie. It didn't go the way I wanted it to, you know, especially after having such a easier birth the first time around and it was not enjoyable, but it was kind of enjoyable. It was like a good experience. This one was a little bit more traumatic because it did not go the way I wanted, but newsflash, when you have kids, a lot of things don't go the way you want or plan. Um, so after, I don't know how long of pushing, not long at all, maybe 20, 30 minutes, maybe less, felt like forever, um, he was out and he was here and beautiful and healthy and safe and it was just absolutely crazy. So I'm still kind of stunned it happened the way it did from the first contraction to him making his arrival. It was about four hours and 45 minutes, which is crazy to me. I was in labor with Noah for like a good 12, maybe longer hours. I don't remember, but I definitely slowed it down with the epidural, which I didn't mind because I was comfortable and I slept and I was just chilling, but whatever. That's kind of how it went with him. And we've just been kind of just adjusting to life with two kids for the past six days. You're six days old. Yeah. You're awake this whole time. I'm pretty impressed with you right now. Noah is head over heels in love with this kid. This is his baby, he says. He tells everyone, this is my baby. And it's like, <laughs> there's nothing better than seeing your firstborn with your second just fall in love. There's definitely some jealousy. It's not like all sunshine and roses. Not, and it's not necessarily jealousy. It's more like, well, why does Miles get that cool swing and that pack and play? I want to be a baby too. And I'm like, no, you don't trust me. <laughs> like you do nothing, but just sleep all day. You want to go to the playground and eat pizza and cookies. He can't do that stuff. So I'm trying to make it seem a lot cooler to be a big kid. And for the most part, it's working. Noah's definitely a bit more emotional because we are away from him for like a day and we've had doctor's appointments and stuff, but we're slowly getting the hang of things. But the most important thing is that he is such a good big brother and is so in love and the way he looks at him and smiles every time he sees them is just like incredible so I'm very happy we're all very happy we're tired you know Matt and I are trading off Matt has been the most incredible partner I could ever ask for really you gonna poop he <sighs> Like, I couldn't have done it without him. I just, he, I don't even have words because he's just been the most amazing, incredible partner anyone could ever ask for. Doing so many things, making sure we're all fed and healthy and 
bottles are washed and, you know, just taking over, like, we've been on shifts. He takes the first shift with Miles and feeds him for, like, and stays with him for, like, a good five hours so I can get some sleep. And then I'm up for the next five hours so he can sleep. And we're just kind of adjusting and it's, it's going well, but it's just brand new life. <laughs> and it's crazy, but... We're good, and today I got to have a shower and do my hair and my makeup, and I'm feeling good. So, but yeah, that's that's about it. That's kind of the story. Um, but yeah, here is our newest member, <laughs> Miles James. We're so oh hello. Yeah, roll those eyes in the back of your head. We're so excited to add you to the family. Hooray! <laughs> So I will be back soon, guys, with some videos, maybe in the next couple weeks. I will hopefully let you know in advance. Um, but that's, that's about it. So I'll see you guys soon. Don't forget to tune in on Fridays for Flashback Friday videos. And yeah, have a wonderful day, guys. I'll see you guys soon. Can you say bye? He's passed out. All right. Bye.